with the Hellion Rocks, and today we're talking to Tommy Victor. What's going on, man? Just doing some interviews. I've got a new record coming out called Prong 10, No Absolutes. And uh, I have listened going to on that. Tour soon. Oh, you have? You've heard yeah. it. Great. I have heard that record, and you know what? I've got a little bit of history with Prong. Um, but way back yonder, somebody turned me on to the track Prove You Wrong. Nice. And I've been ho- been hooked ever since. So, you know, we've had the fortunate instance to see you guys several times, several incarnations. The last time I got to see you guys was uh, at NAM a couple of years ago at uh, the Grove, and you guys oh, killed. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I think so the now, band's better now than it was back then, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's we keep moving ahead and uh, yeah, exactly. have several records. And we keep putting out new records after that. Now, are you going to this year or not? No, I can't make it this year, but um, you are coming my way. I'm in New Mexico. You're coming my way in April, so we're gonna we're gonna go catch the show. Is that on the yeah, Res? Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's gonna be at uh, the Launch Pad in Albuquerque. Oh, okay. The old stand by so, yeah. Launch Pad. Okay, cool. Right, right. That little small place. So Prong Ten, no absolutes. Man, um, strong record. Very strong Thanks, record. Man. At, uh, you know, as as pro- everything's progressing with you guys, it just keeps getting better and better and more more powerful, in my opinion. And uh, I'm thinking that you're taking your life experience and just compounding on it and making music from that. Is that what I'm getting? Totally true, man. That's the only way to go about it for me. I mean, it's uh, A, attitude, and then everything falls from that. And uh you know, writing songs is writing songs, I and mean, you have to live, and you got to live it. You know, I'm not going to sit in front of my computer and try to figure out what's going out in the world unless I'm out there uh, looking at things. So, uh, exactly. yeah. You know, one of the things that I do, I think I, I find really cool about Prong is the fact that it it's bigger than the members. You know, granted, you're the, the core the heart, the mentality, the brains, everything is you, but, you know, the different incarnations have expressed the music in various ways that I think is very cool. Yeah, it's one of those things I just can't get out of. I mean, I talk about, like, the Godfather Part 3, you know, it's like it just draws me back in again. You know, every time I try to, it's just, it's a life calling for me, it seems. Uh, uh, I really don't know how to do anything else, and uh, this has been it, you know. It's like, a lot of records, a lot of tours, and uh, even if I try to get out of it, there's always some good guys to come around and go, no, you got to do this. And I'm like, oh, really? And I, and they make it happen for me. So, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I, I, in a lot of ways, I'm a follower, and I just, uh, you know, uh, I've been blessed with a lot of lucky breaks. Right. You know, um, no absolutes. That, that's coming out on, on Steamhammer SPV February 5th. And like I said, I've got a chance to listen to it, and I've got a review coming out real soon on it. And I find this album strong all the way through, from track one to track 13. And I don't believe that there's any filler in this record. You know, uh, it's hard for me to pick out standout tracks because they're all damn good. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I mean, and, and that's totally by accident, considering we only wrote 13 songs for it. So uh, it's it's a luck of the draw, man. I mean, uh, like, uh, you just go for it and see what happens. Uh, that's, that's all I really could say about it. It's, uh, you know, it was done fast and written fast, and uh, sometimes that's a good thing, you know. It's like the more you demo up a whole bunch of songs the more crazy you get and uh, then you get too attached to it so uh this way you know it, it is what it is and uh i'm glad that you think that the whole thing's strong i mean we made it now in the in the era of a resurgence of vinyl uh i must say it, it, it designing a record i mean i like to look at it in an album format more because uh you know, I'm, I'm older, and I remember the days when you would listen to a complete record. On the other hand, you know, I think we've supplied the, the 22nd rule of 
of uh, Spotify and you know, streaming sites. Uh, so you know, with a song like Ultimate Authority, which leads off and it's just it's it's in your face. So uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate that. You know, that we could hold people's attention for that long. Yeah, you know, I it, I got that feeling when when I heard it. I said, "This is a record." You know, it's not something somebody just threw out. I could tell that there was design behind it. It was built to be a record, and I'm so glad to see that that's coming back from artists that you know that are that have been around that are taking their time to make the art back in it. Yeah, I mean, especially with the packaging that we have now, which is is uh, pretty elaborate on the vinyl, which has a booklet and uh it's uh, it's a fold out and you know it's on two pieces of vinyl so the quality is really good it sounds amazing and then you know you finish up sides with certain songs so you have you know you end up with side b after you know the, the sixth song on the record is do nothing which is you know uh something that's unusual for prong and that's why i say we, we like to mix it up a little bit and uh some people are saying it's almost like a ballad. It's a very dark ballad at that. And then, you know, you end up the record with a song like With with Dignity, which, uh, you know, it says Walk Away With Dignity is the last lyric on the record. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, in some cases it worked out that way. Sequencing was difficult, but, uh, like, I wanted to have, like, you know, a part of the record that were, it, was, it wasn't just thrash metal or hardcore or industrial metal throughout the whole record. Right, and I think that that lend that lend lend itself to the to the weight of the album. You know, um, a lot of people get themselves pigeonholed, but you know, it did seem like you weren't afraid to make the music you wanted to make. I don't know. I mean, that's why I said about the, the, it. It's like it only could be what it is, and uh, you know, uh, I, I was pushed to like try to mail in a record, and I, I just couldn't do it. You know, it's like a, a you know it. it it had to be of a certain. It had to be a prong record, which has that variety in it. So, or was something different. Otherwise, it'd just be an average thrash band if it didn't have some of the, the you know, the melodies and the right. uh, the anthems. So, uh, you know, it's just getting those in there and you know, working at a rapid pace to get to make that happen. But like a lot of it is a roll of the dice. It's 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 by accident. You know, you you, you could spend two years doing it and it's a failure and you could spend two years doing it and it's it's fantastic. You could spend two months doing something and it's terrible or, you know, three weeks and it's great. Who the hell knows? You never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Now, um, I know on the last, on, on Ruining Lives, you uh, worked with Chris Collier and my buddy Chris. Uh, did you work with Chris on this record too? Yes. Chris had a lot of input on this record. I mean, uh, he actually co-produces the record with me, and uh, he started getting into that role with Songs from the Black Hole, which was our covers record that came out uh, last year. And, that was great, uh, too. He did, yeah, he did a knockout job on that, and uh, that was almost preparatory for this one, where we it was the first record that we cut vocals together, and you know that's an important part of making a record is, feeling comfortable with somebody that you can do that with and you know Chris is great with that and uh you know he's got all the skills to, to be a big time producer I mean he does you know, he does it all I mean he's he's amazing yeah he uh works with a lot of friends of mine it's actually kind of cool that he's in my my circle and um one of those friends uh Justin Manning ah! great guy. <laughs> he's a good friend of mine in oh, fact I got a message I got a message for, for you from Justin, and he said he's going to dial you up with some Duloc. Ah! We go at it. We have this, this, um, this uh, I don't know, this acquaintance that we're surrounded by that uh, uh, he's sort of been pushed out of the inner circle nowadays, but uh, uh, this guy is a real character, and uh, it, for years and years and years now, we just... Uh, emulate some of the, what these guy, this guy would say about things and that's one of them is like you know, <laughs> so this guy's from Texas and this real character and we just go on and on it, it, texting each other uh, with, with, th with things like out of nowhere that this guy would say you know it's one of these right. I mean Justin is an hilarious dude and uh, he's a talented 
And I was hanging out with Zach Wild yesterday, too, and Zach was, is obsessed with Justin, too. He's just like, Justin, like, we're going off, like, you know, there's so many other things to talk about, like, it's like with the Rams moving to L.A. and, like, other, you know, music stuff, and we're just talking about Justin for 15 minutes. It's funny. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. over the years, he's become a really good friend of mine, and, um, you know, he, he told me that you'd, you'd get that and you'd get a kick out of it. And you uh, you mentioned the Rams, man. What do you think about that? I think it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, initially I didn't care that much, and now that that it's finalized, it makes a lot of sense because you get it's old school. We have the 49ers in a new stadium up in San Francisco or Santa Clara, and then down here we're going to have a new stadium for the Rams. So it it brings the NFL back to California, and um, it's just it, it, it's great, you know. Hopefully they don't you know screw up with changing uniforms too much or whatever. But I think that. It's it's going to be uh, it's going to be cool, you know. And then we could have a couple of seasons at the Coliseum. Who knows where they're going to go after that for two years until they build a new stadium? But it's great, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's it, we needed football back here. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Nice, but you're still a Jets fan, right? Yes, I'm a huge Jets fan. But the <laughs> the Rams are in the NFC, so I could have an NFC fan. Uh, you know, a team that I could get behind, and uh, which I don't have really. I mean, it's, it's nice. the closest thing is, is the Cardinals, and that's sort of a team that really doesn't have much of an identity. That's close to you, but uh, yeah, it's close to me. Nice. So, getting back, uh, getting back to talking about the touring, man. Um, tell me about your touring band this time. It's the same thing that's been for the last four years. It's Art Cruz and Jason Christopher. So. Uh, those guys are amazing. Uh, they're, it's the best strong lineup of all time. I mean, they're really solid. So, uh, you know, Jason, he just, he's, he just, to have a trio and to have a guy that could, you know, take care of that side of the stage is just like, it's so hard to find. And, you know, again, like I said earlier, I was like blessed with having these people around that, that have been, you know, helping me out, and, uh, you know, he's definitely one of those guys. I mean, uh, he's absolutely fantastic. So, a great performer, great player, great dude, you know, clean and sober, just a great great guy to have around. Nice. So, Prong, man, they've got it, the life of Prong goes back to 1986. I was freaking out about that the other day, 30 freaking years. How far back? In the uh, in the catalog, are you going to go with the, with your uh, your set list? That's a good idea. I mean, I keep forgetting that we should probably recognize a couple of songs from. Uh, well, I mean, one song from Primitive Origins, and one song from Force Fed to to carry it in, to, like represent every every record, you know. Uh, maybe do a Scorpio Rising song this time, and then a couple of new ones, and uh, and then you know have the 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 solid foundation of cleansing songs and back to differ songs. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, every record should probably be represented. You know, most of our set though is definitely uh, cleansing oriented. It, it continues to be that way because of you know uh, that record being the classic record. You know, but we do ruining live stuff, and you know we'll do cause to stone and. You know, uh, and the No Absolute songs, and then you know a couple of covers too. Nice. You know, I, when I when I heard Prove You Wrong back in the day, and I said, "Oh shit!" I went and I grabbed up every record I could, and, and since then, you know, I've got every one. And uh, you know, the, the, they're all. I couldn't pick a single song off them. You know, it's it's like um, with the advent of technology now, I, uh, my flash drive for my my truck. And I can just put on prong and just let it play through, and, and you know I'm not dissatisfied. It's um, I think that prong for me, for myself, is a band that I kind of feel like it's it's for me. You know what I mean? And and I just listen to the music, and I could give a shit if anybody else wants to listen to it. It it, it reaches into me, and I, I dig it. Well, that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, what else can you else can you do? I mean, it's uh. uh you know, I have those bands too, and uh, people don't get some of the stuff that I listen to. And uh, you know, uh, 
you know, I just do it, and it, like I like I said, it's 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 a calling of sorts, and uh, I'm glad that there's people out there like you that that are that are into it. It's uh, you know, in this day and age, and um, hopefully, you continue to make records and uh, keep it going. You know. So it's, yeah. yeah, you know, I've never I've never listened to the you know the quote unquote you know music critics. You know, either I like the record or I don't. You know, and I'm not going to pretend to be a, a bandwagon fan for something because you know it's trendy. You know, there's a like you said, there's a lot of a lot of music in my collection that people go, well, why are you listening to that? And because it reaches me, you know, the the music that's made that I like, I can tell that it's an extension of the person that made it. And to me, that's quality. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it, it's I, I believe me, I, I don't follow any any rules, and I don't claim to be like quote unquote an artist, but I guess, you know, I am in some ways where, you know, uh and I don't know where that comes from, but um it's you know, there's it's sort of an internal feeling, like you know, it it's like going down a certain route and you just have these these instincts that, that start coming about about certain things and uh and then you have to like follow them. So uh and I don't I, you know, in one of my views of like mankind these days is that you know, everyone's sort of the same in a way, you know, whether they, they pile other external things on top of that to, to make them different, to make yourself different. But, like, you know, after traveling the world so much and, you know, talking to a lot of people and, you know, hanging out, like, I, I, I've drawn at some conclusion that despite race, color, or anything, you know, everyone has sort of these, the same, um, same problems. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it, that's, that's sort of what I center on a little bit, like writing lyrics and, you know, uh, not everyone's going to be hugely popular. And, you know, you talk about, like, critics and stuff. I mean, regardless of when we say in press releases and stuff, like, you know, Prong is not that critically acclaimed. So it's like, you know, uh, we, we, we're still, you know, you figure after years of doing it, some people would be like, you know, uh, respectful of certain things, but uh, that doesn't happen that much. So, uh, you know, I don't worry about the critics. You know, I don't, I don't really uh, trust them that much because so, they do, you know, they, they don't, uh, they, they're they on their own agenda in a lot of ways, you know. Like, they're, they're trying right. to be rock stars, too, or something. So Right. But you know what? Every, you know, when I talk to people about prong, they listen to them, they get it, they understand. Every show I've been to, the fans get into it. The crowd gets into it. You know, that's got to it's got to lead to some satisfaction. You know, and I, I don't I don't see people. Uh, you know, very few people saying, "Man, that band sucked." You know, and, I, and like I said, I've seen you guys several times, and the crowd goes away satisfied. Well, we try. I mean, uh, it, yeah, it's like you, uh, you know, um, being like a, a lower middle class dude. You know, like, uh, you know. Uh, from the outer boroughs of New York City, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it, it, if somebody's paying, whether, you know, like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever, you know, like, uh, I, I, I like people to think that they're getting some of their money's worth out of it, you know, it's like, right. I, 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 you know, being a, a brought up as Catholic, I guess, like a, a Catholic guilt, I don't feel like ripping people off. So a lot of it's that, you know, it's like, you know, uh, I hope they, you know, I try to get, you know, uh, I don't, I don't like, uh, dissatisfying people and I try my best, you know, if you try to, you know, do this without, without overworking things, you know, and being chintzy about it, we just try to go out and, uh, have a good time. And it, you know, a lot of it has to do with the songs too. I mean, there's, you know, we try to represent like the, all the records and, you know, people want to hear certain songs and, you know, we, we like to do them. So it's, that's important. Very cool. You know, and earlier we touched on the fact that you're, you know, you listen to different music. What, uh, what are you listening to these days, man? What's, uh, what's Oh man, like, uh, yeah, I, I still center on a lot of old stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, um, especially, especially the doors. Like, yeah. I'm like, I got really got into them. Uh, a lot in the last couple of years, and there's like a new Killing Joke record that's out that called Pylon, and I really like yeah, a lot. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's really great. It, it 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 just brings all of Killing Joke together, and I'm a huge Killing Joke fan. 
So, I mean, uh, it, I'm not disappointed with that. Uh, you know, as far as metal goes, I mean, I listen to a lot of different metal, too. Like, you, the, you know, I sometimes I, I complain about, like, the Gent bands, but I actually must say, like, I do like some of them, you know. And, uh, you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll listen to Gojira and, you know, some heavy stuff that I like a lot. Right. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I reach out to other stuff as well. Like, you know, um, you know, I mean, I, I can't not listen to Cream and, you know, old, uh, you know, Hendrix and stuff like that too, you know. And Sabbath, of course. Deep Purple. I went through a whole stage recently. But yeah, and it's a lot of old stuff. I mean, stuff that's nostalgic to me. Uh, you know, Kiss. Uh, as far as new stuff goes, I mean, like, you know, I have a daughter and, you know, I'll listen to her music and, which is, is, she, they, these kids today, I mean, it's only like an old man. They don't even know who the artist is. Well, they, no one cares about the artist anymore. It's just about who's the producer and, like, you know, this, these yeah, exactly. DJs and stuff. I know what I mean? It's like, but she doesn't even know the names of them, and I'm like, I try to appreciate anything that, that comes across the board to see what it, see what's what it's worth, you know. Like um, exactly. Yeah, so uh, I'm not that you know stigmatized by you know modern music that much. That's funny, you know, uh, a lot of stuff you were telling, talking about the, the bands I listen to, because I I know for a fact I'm two years and two weeks older than you, so we're oh, from okay. the same. We're from the same mold. Now, we're talking to Tommy Victor from Prong. Brand new record coming out, and I have listeners and readers in 115 countries. You need to tell wow. the world what you want to tell them. Tell them. Tell them all about it, man. It's all yours. Oh, what am I going to tell them? I tell them to be cautious because, uh, you know, as soon as you start getting – uh, attached to whatever you're doing, it may get ripped apart. So, uh, you know, uh, you got to go with the flow and, uh, you know, just take it easy and, uh, don't be so committed to your ideas because they may change instantaneously. That's sort of what, like, no absolutes is about. It's like, you know, we, we be committed to these ideas and it's, it's all in our minds and we're all, we're all just trying to feed our egos in a way to make to think that we know better than other people and we, that we uh, that we're better than other people and everything. And that, that, that's not true. So uh, it's fine to be educated. It's fine to have knowledge, but uh, essentially uh, be respectful to everybody and uh, you know uh, appreciate the air. For, I sound like this Zen. Buddhist right now, but, uh, you know, just breathe, put a smile on your face, get some sun, and uh, that's all you really need sometimes. That's true. That's a true statement. I'm glad to hear. So, Prong has a brand new record coming out, brand new tour going to be happening. You guys need to make sure you get out and support music, support live music, support artists so they can keep making real records. Yeah, James, yeah. You can, I mean, all, all, our, all our dates are on the website, which is WWPROM yep. Music. And then, you know, like, you, you can hit me up on Twitter, Prom Music, and then Facebook, uh, you know, which is uh, Prong. So, uh, you know, just keep an eye on what's going on. And we got a lot, we got a lot of dates this year, so we're all over the place. Yeah, you're going to be running through me, uh, like, April 25th, so... I'm going to make it a point that to go and meet you and shake your hand and thank you for the years of music. I'm going to make it a point of that. And, well, I'll uh, be out in the crowd. I mean, like, you know, I'll be at the merch booth or around. And at the launch pad, there's really no backstage, so I'll just be, like, hanging right. around. And, uh, maybe at the restaurant next door or something. <laughs> but I'll Let's be see. there. I've already I've already ordered my vinyl. I pre-ordered my vinyl, so oh nice! I'm gonna be bringing. You'll love it. I'm gonna I mean, be bringing it. Like the yeah. yeah, I'm Bring a I'm it. a vinyl guy. I, be, I believe the warmth comes through with that. So I'm gonna be bringing that and have you uh, put your John Hancock on it for me. And oh, yeah. uh, this is this has been the Hellion Hellion Rocks. Tommy Victor from Prong, and we're out. Thanks, James.